Atlantic traffic in enslaved Africans. And usually when we teach that history, if there's anything you take away from it, growing up in the UK, it's that William Wilberforce set Africans free. There's nothing else you probably learned in school other than William Wilberforce set Africans free. I went to the National Portrait Gallery when I was a child, seven years old, and my teacher pulled me aside and pointed at the picture of William Wilberforce and said, Kingsley, she was Canadian, this man, he stopped slavery. Now, unfortunately for my teacher, I went to a Pan-African Saturday school where we learned about the Maroons and the Haitian Revolution. So I'm seven, but I know a little history. So I'm like, miss, all by himself. You mean he helped? And she beefed me. She was like, no, Kingsley, he stopped slavery. I was like, come on, miss, stop it. So, <laughs> for people who believe in freedom and democracy, as we say we do, who believe in human rights, we must understand that slavery is not new. Even though the transatlantic traffic in enslaved Africans may have been particularly brutal, may have gone on particularly long, may have been particularly large scale, there may have been particular features, Ancient Greece had slavery, ancient Rome had slavery, there was slavery in the Middle East, there was forced servitude in certain African empires for sure, right? Slavery is not a new 
uh, thing in human history. But only once in the whole history of humanity, that I know of, and that I've ever been able to find in history, have enslaved people overthrown the government and become the government themselves. Now surely for anyone who genuinely believes in freedom and democracy, and human rights, and we talk about the march toward democracy, what could be more democratic than getting rid of slavery? We want to cheer for abolitionists, but we won't cheer for enslaved people who freed themselves and became the government. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, between 1789 and 1804 in Haiti, the enslaved Africans in Haiti defeated the three major European empires of the time at war and declared themselves independent and the first nation to abolish slavery. I know our Prime Minister wants to keep repeating while he's visiting Jamaica that everyone in Jamaica should remember Britain's role in abolition because Britain was the first country to abolish slavery. But 1804 comes before 1807. It's just basic arithmetic. Next slide, please. Some of the leaders of the Haitian Revolution, again, one of the fascinating things about history is how sexist history is, even revolutionary history. So most of the leaders we know, even from black revolutionary history, are always men. Yet we know in the Haitian Revolution, from Toussaint Louverture's own mouth, a gentleman we're going to get to in a minute, that 30% of all the fighting troops in the Haitian Revolutionary Army were women. Given that two-thirds of the people enslaved in the Americas were men, that means women were absolutely fully playing their role in the army. This is one of the leaders, Cecile Fatiman. She was what we call a voodoo priest, and her and a man called Dutty Bookman, who was also a voodoo priest and a Muslim, he was a former Maroon in Jamaica, he left Jamaica, he came to Haiti. In 1789, they staged a ceremony that was really what we see as the formal part of the Haitian Revolution. We have to understand there were hundreds of rebellions throughout transatlantic slavery, which is normal. You try to kidnap people and their children and enslave them, they're going to rebel, it's normal. And the only way to maintain slavery was through terrorism. And we can go through whole catalogues of the kinds of terrorism that we used. But in 1789, Bookman and Fatiman started a ceremony that kicked off what would become the only successful slave revolution in human history and lead to the defeat of the three major empires in Europe and the breaking of the back of the transatlantic traffic forever. Next slide, please. Another leader, female leader, Santi Belair. She's famous because when she was executed, which she was, she first of all demanded to be executed by firing squad. They were going to hang her because she was a woman. She said, no, I demand to be executed by firing squad like a man. And according to the tradition, her husband, naturally, if you're about to be killed, was a bit upset and he was crying and she apparently slapped him and said, do you not know how, how sweet it is to die for liberty? Stand up. And basically her husband had to stand up and take the bullets like a man. Because you know we're told only men can be brave. Be like a man, don't be like a woman. Or Santi Belair was like a man. Of course she was really like a woman. Next slide please. Now the leaders that we do know, if we know anything about the Haitian Revolution, will be the following two gentlemen. This gentleman is called Jean-Jacques Dessalines. He was the man who actually led the country to independence. He was the deputy general, if you like, for most of the revolution. He was underneath the mainly the Toussaint Louverture. But he was the leader who actually took Haiti across the finish line, who, took, who fought the final battle against the French, the Battle of Vertier. And he declared the country independent in 1804. After declaring the country independent, he massacred all of the French people left on the island. What a lot of pseudo-historians have done is said he killed all the white people left on the island to try and racialize the history in a way that is not totally accurate. What they don't really want to tell you is, no, he killed all of the French people left on the island with the active encouragement of Britain and America, who were not really getting on with France at the time. This is during the Napoleonic Wars. What's more, part of this history that we don't learn, a fascinating part of the history, is that the Polish, who were part of the French army, defected from the French army and fought with the Africans against the French, against slavery. And when the revolution was over, he didn't kill the Polish. In fact, if you look at the Constitution of 1805, he done something that's very fascinating. He declared that the only ethnic identity valid in Haiti from this day forward would be black. And that even the Polish and the Germans who fought with us, from this day forward, they're black. Which I thought was fascinating as a social scientist, for someone to say, right, being black has been a badge of dishonor, has been a crime, has been something to make you a slave for all of our history on this island. Now blackness is just going to be normal. We're even going to say that white people are black. And interestingly, of course, they renamed the island Haiti after the honor of the indigenous people, because that was their name for it. Yeah, it, the French had called it, or well, the Spanish had called it San Domingo, and it had all various different European names. It's now Haiti and the Dominican Republic, by the way, because it's one island. But during colonial times, it was at various points. One side was Spanish, one side was French, then it was unified, then it split again. And this is the gentleman that everyone knows, if they do know about the Haitian Revolution, Toussaint Louverture. He was the leader for most of the revolution. All of these people I've just shown you began their life as enslaved human beings. Toussaint Louverture was a slave until his, he was 45 years old. But he became an educated enslaved person. He became a privileged slave, if you like. He was allowed to read. He was a coachman, which was usually a, a, a role that was reserved for mulattoes, mixed people, or for Europeans. So he, he began to read. And in the Bible, and in a book by a French scholar called Abbey Rhinau, 
he started reading all sorts of stories about rebellion, about revolution, about a messiah. And he decided he was going to be that messiah. And he became a brilliant military general and he led the country for most of its history. Then in 1802, after the French had betrayed him many, many times, the French said, all right, come to France. Come on, we'll, we'll settle this. Come to France, we'll have a negotiation. Many of Toussaint's advisors said, Toussaint, don't go to France. You know what they're going to do. Don't go to France. But I think maybe Toussaint was tired at this point. Maybe he thought the French were going to negotiate. As they said they were going to. I don't know what he thought. But he went to France. The French put him in prison and starved him to death. Because they intended to reinstall slavery, and they, even though they said they hadn't. Fortunately for history, the French lost the final battle, and slavery was outlawed in Haiti. But, unfortunately, in 1825, once the different European warring powers had made up, the French threatened to reinvade Haiti. And they said, if you don't pay us back for our loss of earnings, for our loss of property, 91 million gold francs, we're going to go to war with you again. At that point, maybe Haiti wasn't in a position to go to war again. They paid back those 91 million gold francs, and it took over a century to do so. So when we talk about slavery being ancient history, well, if they started paying in 1825, I do believe it was 1947 when they finished paying that debt. Next slide, please. But one of the things that the Haitian Revolution did lead to was the Louisiana Purchase. Napoleon, for those who don't know what that was, that green area was French Louisiana. That area of America was owned by the French until 1803. Napoleon had dreams of a new empire based on Haiti. Haiti at the time was the most profitable colony in the world, producing more sugar than India, producing half of all Europe's coffee. It was an incredibly profitable colony. Once Napoleon lost that colony, he had no purpose for this anymore, so he sold it to what became America. So the Haitian Revolution, a revolution on a tiny little island of enormous hemispheric importance, of enormous human importance, yet we don't learn about it. We've got to make up our mind. We're either for freedom and democracy, and we're going to celebrate movements for that, or we're not. We can't cheer for abolitionists, because their efforts would have been worthless with the greatest of respect to them without the revolutions that were going on in the Caribbean, and we can demonstrate that. 1804, Haitian Revolution ends, oh, magically, 1807. Britain has an epiphany and says slavery is bad, and outlaws the transatlantic traffic. Finally, slavery itself was made illegal in Britain in 1834, or in Britain's Caribbean colonies, two and a half years after the largest rebellion in Jamaican history. Well, what do you know? Isn't that a coincidence that the dates are always so close? 60,000 enslaved Africans in Jamaica under a man called Sam Sharp burnt down half the plantations in Jamaica, killed a whole bunch of slave masters. 500 of them were hung in revenge, but nonetheless, slavery, the back of slavery in Jamaica, in Haiti and elsewhere had been broken. There was no use for it even anymore. And of course, it wasn't central in many ways to Britain and other more industrialized countries' economies at that point. But again, that's another debate for another day. That's not to say there were not genuine abolitionists in, the, in this country, and they shouldn't be remembered. They absolutely should. But to remember abolitionists without remembering hundreds of thousands of people who physically shed their blood to free themselves seems a little bit hypocritical to me. Next slide, please. The last slide I'm going to show you for the evening.
Of course we know over the past couple of weeks we've been hearing about a lot of things African. It was Emancipation Day and I saw a lot of amazing outfits in the National Park, a lot of creativity. We also had, so beside the event in the National Park, we also had the University of Guyana's con sixth conversation on law and society and that focused on reparations as well. We also had the Deputy Secretary General of the AU, Ambassador Kwesi Kwati, I think, if I hope I get the, got the name correct. Um, he visited Guyana, he visited the entire Caribbean to celebrate with um, the Caribbean, celebrate emancipation with the Caribbean. And so those are some of the things that we'll be speaking about this evening. Uh, we have with us some, a really diverse group of young people. So I'm going to start from my immediate right, who is Asha Gay Cromwell Cowell. Asha, Asha Gay Cowell, who is a graduate of the University of the West Indies, a graduate in economics, mm -hmm. as well as she's been involved in a lot of youth work across the Caribbean. Recently, um, a participant and of the Caribbean Forum and Youth Popu of Caribbean Forum Youth Population and Development. We have with us one of our members, uh, or one of our personnel, public relations officers, as a matter of fact, Sule Collymore, and be, yeah. the president of Akamba. Again, <laughs> Mr. Kibwe Copeland. Guys, nice to be here. Nice to be here. Good evening. Thanks so, I know I didn't do much justice to introducing this diverse group of young people I have sitting with me this evening. So I'll ask us to do some introductions of ourselves. <laughs> um, and since we started with Asha just now, I know Kibwe, you're a very known face on the program by now, and a very known face Not much to say. on the um, whole movement mm. with youth and reparations locally and now we're moving regionally but we'll speak about that in a bit but i'll ask for some introductions starting about starting with kipwe and well, then we'll go down the line well since oh. it's already been known <laughs> no cable copeland i'm the president of kimba which is the youth um, the reparations committee and also the regional body for caricom when it comes to using reparations all right but just before you go 
that's that's some of what you do, right? But who are you? Tell me something fun about yourself. <laughs> well, um, for persons who know me, I'm a poet. Love poetry. I think that's one of my barn skills. Um, you know, love sports. Like playing basketball more than football. <laughs> Um, into the arts a lot, love music, I think I live on music and uh, of course organizations is something I think is a part of my life, uh, being a part of youth work, when I talk active youth work for over nine years now, I'm the founder chair for Clear Path, politics on the other side also, so it's, you know, that's a little bit about me and yeah, I'm very, I have a great sense of humor. Right. See, that's, that's, that's a lot of the diversity I was talking about, mm -hmm. so I didn't lie to you when I said we have a diverse group of young people, so like, uh, um, well, first, thanks for having me. Um, hi, Mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> um, um, I am an international relations um, student at the University of Guyana, final year, graduating in November. A little bit about myself, for me personally, uh, for those that know me, I, am, uh, I, like lang I love languages, foreign languages. So the fluency in speaking of languages, you, you can grasp me with a conversation with, with languages. Uh, I like youth work, um, speaking about development in youth and population and so forth. So. That's a, a bit about me. And you speak seven languages. Why are we being so modest this evening? Oh, wow. <laughs> so, seven Sule languages. also speaks seven languages. Wow. Yes, I, I do. I do. Not fluent in all of them, but I do speak several languages. Asha. Hello. So, I'm the Jamaican of the panel. Um, I am actually here on an internship with CARICOM. But, um, so I'm Asha Gay Cowell. I uh, I've just completed my... BSc in Economics and Statistics. I am the outgoing president of UESTAT, which is the Vice Chancellor's Ambassadorial Corps, and that would spur my involvement or me being here. So the recent form, ECOT form that would have gone, I was a part of that planning team, and I was able to transition into an internship with CARICOM. So I don't know. I do fun fact. I am I do performing arts. I sing with the Nexus Performing Arts Company. If you're in New York, they're there. They're actually going to be there for a show. And um, I'm proudly Jamaican <laughs> to my art. <laughs> hush, 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 hush. <laughs> hush. hush. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with emancipation. Mr. President, Mr. PR, uh, we, Ikamba, engaged a lot of young people in the National Park on Emancipation Day. We were there for almost the entire day. Tell me about some of um, the things we did, some of what you saw, the interaction with young people, that sort of thing, starting with Celine. All right. Well, for me, I would like to point out that Emancipation Day was a, a lovely day. Um, we got this show, afro Guyanese culture, and it's not amongst Africans only, but we saw the true spirit of what it is to be Guyanese. We are a country of six races, and we saw the combination and integration of various races coming together to celebrate African culture. That for me I found was exceptional and spectacular. I saw a lot of a lot of fancy dresses in fact. I think I saw T'Challa. I think I saw um, <laughs> He was there. He was there. Yeah, um, but it was it was a wonderful event. I saw lovely performances in the National Park, um, Jackie Jacks. We had a combination of arts there and it was it was absolutely stunning. Let's see. Yeah, and, and just co continuing from what Sully was saying, you know, it's good to have a day whereby you know you see everybody being proud of being African or being connected to African, and of course it's already diverse. Ghana being a country of, of six races, and at every holiday there's an embrace. We all embrace when there's Emancipation Day. All ethnicities would embrace um, Emancipation when there's Pago and so on. So that um, the diversity and that um, solidar solidarity to other people's. Um, what's to say it's more close to them it's very good one thing i like about the day is that we had a lot of engagements ikimba of course were um with the reparations boot we had a lot of engagements there we took a lot of pictures we interacted with a lot of persons we had um, we even had a game called catch the rhythm you know you could uh, the, the, there was a drummer who would have started the beat and you had another drum to you know catch the beat and once you've catch the beat you know you would have got a, um, one of the tokens and so on from the boot added to that we did our challenge which was called what does black means to you what does it mean being black to you we went around the whole park and we met different individuals and we asked them in groups and, in, and individually what does black mean to you, what does it mean to be black and we had a lot of responses, um, the responses were good, um, some person of course is still puzzled because you know we understand that there is a, a gap when it comes to the understanding of what it is to be an African person etc 
but we had a lot of good engagements i think the emancipation was besides what we saw besides the cultural dress etc it's something that is very deep once you're a person of african descent you know is the day it reminds us of the atrocities and how we passed that um, enslavement period into you know being emancipated mm -hmm. of course the fight still continues but it was a day that we, we must always remember and must always look far from the fight still continues that's, that's something we'll pick up in a bit mm -hmm. but youth involvement let's go to youth involvement so we were seeing faces do we think that the event did enough to attract young people and if, if, if so, hmm. what were some of the things that um, were there that we would think were attractive to young people or that were attractive to young people? And if not, why? I think people what are, can we do? I think people are driven by movements. You know, um, as for young people, if they don't see action, they don't really respond. You know, people just stand up and talk and talk and talk. does not really move with the younger generation. What happened in the National Park especially when it comes to Kimbo, we moved as an entourage. It was, I think, about, it was how much it was? <laughs> about, <laughs> about 14 or yeah, 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 persons yeah, there moving actually. through the park, and we moved as a group, and everybody decked in African clothing. And when we interfaced with persons, it was like, person even fit because it was like, this, everybody, you know, <laughs> everybody interviewed me at the same time, but it was one person, right? And person felt like, this is something that we could be a part of. Look at these young people, you know, we, we are young people. You know, and they say young people are not um, really interested in certain things. You know, they, they fo focus on things that are not so important. But we proved to persons on that day that young people would take up such a mantle. We didn't go there just to lime or just to gap or just to meet up with friends. We, gave, we entered there with a mission to get out to young people, to get engagements, to start a conversation, a meaningful conversation that is something that, should, that belongs to us. And we had a lot of engagements. Persons actually wanted to talk to us. Persons actually said, so how can we be a part? What's your number? Uh, so what we saw was the movement bringing persons along. Persons saw action and they wanted to be a part of that action. So that's something that we talk about how we get persons to be involved. And of course, uh, moving forward, we want much more activities like this. We don't have to wait until another Emancipation Day to show persons that young people are moving. That's why Kimba is dedicated towards bringing more activities that are more engaging than talk shops. Mm -hmm. So persons can, you know, feel that movement, feel that drive, come and be a part of that drive. I don't know if I give any justice to your question. If I didn't, you could just... No, but there, there, there are a lot of things mm. that Ikemba will be doing soon, so look out. There are things that we will not say now. <laughs> we'll just keep the fire burning, the emancipation, the um, anticipation burning. But there are a lot of things that Ikemba will be doing very soon. Uh, Sule, you were a part of the discussions, those interviews. What came out in those interviews? What were some of the concerns that our young people raised? What were they saying? That type of thing. Well, well, the, the things that came out mostly was we saw a lot of black conscious youths or Afro conscious youths. It's, it, sometimes you find it, some persons would say that there's not a mu much youth involvement. But what we found when we did the challenge is that we have a lot of youths that are have their thinking caps on, so to speak. And we found that when we spoke to them, we, we realized that these youths are very conscious. And we, as Ikembo, we push the movement forward. So we, we basically put them, place them into our arms, and we are trying to run with that, essentially. So that is basically... Just a quick add to that too, right? That I, I take a lot. Just a quick add to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> quick add to that. Because um, one thing I think was mentioned on the day, the persons who you expect to give you a certain um, response, like you see somebody say, well, this person might give you more intelligence than response. Give us something short. And somebody might think that, might just tell you that black is powerful or black is strength. Mm -hmm. Give us something more lengthy and more in-depth and more deep. It's like, it was surprising at some point in time. You see, that's why we should not run with the assumption that people don't know what is going exactly. on. People don't know the history. Mm -hmm. That's why the engagement is very much important. That's why we as a camera are going to be coming as a, a force that was going to, they can hear their voices. You can find us on the Facebook page, Ikemba. You can come, you can try and do What is Black Challenge. You can basically come and say, what is being black means to you. So you can just come out, post to our page, and we'll, we will respond to you promptly as possible. All right. mm -hmm. Let's get to Asha. Because Hi. you've been excluded for a while. <laughs> You're still here. Um, emancipation in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. What? What is it like? What do you do? What are, what are your interactions like? So it's very, alright, so because our independence is so close to our emancipation, 
a lot of the emphasis back home is placed on independence because we have a grand gala and that kind of thing um and we're all about our black green and gold thanks for the souvenir <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome so um the the persons coming on decked in their african attire that for me was really really nice i was just like oh, wow and i loved that african pride that is there because you guys have six races whereas jamaica is predominantly african uh, there's an african descendant strong african descendant um population i think that we've probably taken it for granted so we know we are very black conscious we're very proud of our Africanness but I think because you guys have the different races it shows a lot it's a lot more blatant in terms of we just think that, okay fine we're, we're Jamaicans we just need to have on our black green and gold bandana was a thing at one point it's not so predominant um, but like I said most of our emphasis back home is placed on independence but persons are definitely conscious and aware of the the true importance of emancipation we found that at one point people were saying emancipence um because one is the first one is the sixth and i think there was a push for it to say okay no 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 separation emancipation was it's it needs its own identity independence has its own identity okay. and so <laughs> yeah. right so that splitting so the emancipence, we still the term is still used in terms of. I like I like the combination of words though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the distinction and each in their own right is very important in terms of the culture's development. Um, so, but it was definitely interesting for me to not be home and um, to experience how you guys do your thing. I really love the 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 true cent African centeredness of your your display in terms of the attire and everything it was so it was like wow thank you very much <laughs> i still You're wore my black green and gold but so that is a little bit about what happened on emancipation we have a video of what happened on emancipation and there's someone right here that's in that video you'll see when you see that video, I want you'll see just exactly who that person is and what they're doing. Look closely, very closely. Uh, let's go to that video and when we get back, we'll talk about Ikemba's first general members meeting. Welcome back to Ikemba Youth Program on Reparations. I hope you saw um, the person that's here, that was in the video. Mm -hmm. But as, as you saw, we had quite a lot of fun in uh, the National Park on Emancipation Day. But let's get to our first general members meeting. And of course, I'll ask you, Mr. President, to talk about that. President of Ikemba today, President of Guyana 2040, but let's, let's, talk, let's talk about Ikemba. Yes. I like the endorsement, you know. But we had a first general members meeting yesterday, actually. 
um, what we intend to do with the Kimbo, even though we started last year, the 26th of November, whereby it was just an executive body of 11 persons, you know, in this year, March the, the 7th, is when we actually took on particular roles to become president, vice president, etc. What we intend to do, of course, is to build that movement. We don't want to make all decisions around us 11 persons. It, 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 is, it doesn't make any sense. We must have a more inclusive and have more persons, more ideas coming in. So what we intended, what we did was to set a general members meeting whereby we asked persons who are interested, persons who are in the same thought pattern to come be a part of the discussion, you know, and see how they can also play a part. So yesterday, which was the first, uh, we actually, that was this, the first, the second Wednesday, and it's going to be also in the last Wednesday of each month. We, we engaged persons who are not from the executive of Ikimbo. Um, we had, uh, I think it was how much persons we had new. It was about, about trying to give a, trying to give a yeah, count. Let us say 15, 15 persons that were new um, that came out. And the discussion was a very good discussion. We started at 5 o'clock and I think it ended at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And persons were, in, were leaving and they were still talking, saying that they, they have to, they, they, you know, they had to leave. So what we had a lot of yesterday was a lot of engagements um, on the whole topic of reparations, the youth involvement in reparations. I think that's that that's one of our main purposes to start this 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 that discussion, and of course to um, champion that discussion, get more young people involved. And yesterday we were I think um, we were successful in doing that our first meeting. Um, the persons who were there I think those persons sound very knowledgeable. That's why we don't make the assumption that person doesn't know. You know our friend is um, Dorin. Dorin. Dorin, yeah. Dorin, he was very educated very about it. Yeah, he started yeah, like calling us at the dates. I want to know if he got him dates somewhere <laughs> in the back of his, of his head, you know. We had a person there who um, really responded to the whole conversation. Or Nelson, or Nel um, Harris, we had Shana Day, some other persons, you know, who came and added the discussion. So this is something that we are going to be doing every month, getting more persons involved, and we hope to engage persons who are viewing once you're interested. Ikimba is going to open your arms and welcome you to mm -hmm. the discussion. Like Ikimba and... Facebook, Ikemba, I-K-E-M-B-A. Follow us for everything um, as it relates to reparation, as it relates to African culture and all things African. But, you know, you know one of the things I liked, or, or one of the things I noticed mm -hmm. about the meeting yesterday was that the persons there, they didn't just appear there. It wasn't, hey, you know, there's this reparations meeting, come while we go. Those persons were engaged throughout the month because we had a couple of activities. Correct, there was correct. the conversation in law and society and I saw some of the faces there. There was a population, there was a foreign the population one. youth in development. Yeah, reparations was represented there and we saw some of the faces there as well. We also had two persons I think from um, not from Guyana. They were doing. They're from U. I think UWI. 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 UWI students. Yeah, two UWI students also were there, right? Saint Augustine, one is from Saint Augustine, I think. And he yeah. said he's gonna be away. Yes, and yeah. he's also. He's, he said even when he's away, how can he still <laughs> but, play a part? Uh, but that as well. That's that, what that, that goes. That, part. goes mm. that ties right into the regional movement. Mm -hmm. But getting back to my point, is that, and and it's something that you mentioned, mm. that we tend to think that persons aren't aware. We tend to think that persons aren't following what is going on with reparations. But to see those faces there all through the month, because we had quite a lot of activities, and to see them at the meeting yesterday, that says something. Right? Let's get to you, Asha. Mm -hmm. You were there at the, at the meeting as well. Um, what are your thoughts? I think it's interesting, as you said, Darren was just a, a history book. He had all the dates, he had all, all the knowledge. And I think what was good is that you found that the persons that were there are pretty resourceful. Um, and in terms of building your base, and especially with the plans that we have going forward, you can see where you resource mobilization is not an issue because you're actually getting the right persons on board. And it's not just, okay, this looks like something that you know, has a 10 chance to let me go, but there, there's a vested interest in it and you can see where they, in terms of, for anything to be sustainable, it needs to have a good foundation, have good roots, and you can find that, okay, the committee members have created that foundation, but in terms of the blocks building up forward, you're actually getting, you know, 
we have good bricks if you want to to just to use the analogy to <clears throat> go forward and build on and ensure that it can ensure it can bust success right throughout the region so it was very good and uh, very engaging and it was good to see that persons are actually they committed they didn't and for those who didn't initially commit they're just like okay i do have an interest i need more info but they're willing to they weren't against the thought they were very receptive i think i might so, i think i might okay. also talk about team building and so on yeah. right yeah. so yeah. it was good I, I definitely enjoyed it um i'll be here for the month so i <laughs> can see me for the well, for the next one yeah i'll be here so I'm, I'm i'm sticking with you on this because because why i'm sticking with you on this is because you were just mentioning region um mm -hmm. can be going regional mm -hmm. um you're an internet caricom you're also mobilizing, involved in mobilizing young people throughout the region. Mm -hmm. How do you see, what are, what are your thoughts on the movement going regional? How do we get there? How do we get to a successful regional youth preparation movement? Okay, so I am an intern with CARICOM, Culture and Community Development. And operations is actually one of my assignments. And that's one of the things that I'm working on, actually. So, um, being a part of the the ECLAC forum, we we always know about social media and all the different platforms that exist. But the power of utilizing these platforms was truly exhibited with this forum because we had lead up dialogue, and we would have had we been, we would have been able to engage youth right across the region from twenty nine member states of Caribbean of the Caribbean in entirety. And we'd have meetings that start at 5 and 10 o'clock we're still there. So people are actually, because they had vested interest in terms of youth and youth development. So you know that it's, the platform is, is there. Um, the resource is there. So I'm working on trying to develop, I'm not sure if I can, dialogues. Um, that is one of my things that I'm working on. I'm trying to, so the initial thought process is to sensitize youth. Reparations is a broad topic and that was one of the things that was brought up yesterday but in terms of Ekemba's key point um, of education and self-repair I think it's a very key message and it's very very relevant to us as youth um, especially with social media being so influential on the culture of Caribbean I think being able to have a keener sense of who we are and just the education and the capacity building that Ikemba wants to offer, the sensitization of this in, um, and getting this information disseminated across the region is key. And so the dialogues that I am trying to work on for you guys is it seeks to engage youth across the region, utilizing um, the various platforms that exist and just setting up bases right across the region because as I would have said, you know, you guys have built a good foundation, have set a good foundation. So therefore, we just need to now find the good bricks to build on it and ensure that it's success. So any any form of storm, wind or rain that comes, is still standing firm. Yeah, that's a very good one. That's a very good one. All right. Um, we'll get back to the foreman population youth and development. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, we'll go right to that. But I'll start with you, Kipri. Mm -hmm. You made a pitch. You presented on reparation to that forum what were some of the things that was in your presentation well um that forum was i think was a very very good forum one it brought uh young people from different countries different um which they, different years together you know it's good it was good for networking it was good for understanding the different cultures the different values um what is going on in trinidad what's going on in bahamas what's going on in grenada etc and uh, it was a three days um forum mm -hmm. and it was well enjoyed it was not just about sitting down and talk we had a lot of interruptions we had some side events etc and great facilities. Also. <laughs> great facilities. <laughs> we even had soca. This is the first. Yeah. I was just. Oh, this is the first we time. Had soca. There was a lot of There was soca at uh, a forum. For if you came, if you came in late, you had to dance. Yeah. So you know, it was it was a youth forum. It was fun. It was that just a forum? It was a youth forum. So I'm. Um, I have to commend the organizers, commend the facilitators, and commend all the young people who were part of this forum. And it was forum. youth in all forums because you had the youth, you had the 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 
the what was it? You have this the experience, experience youth, youth. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, um, and, and there was and there was Doctor Brown, who's the youth and her own right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, house. Yes. <laughs> we get to that again. So it was a very good forum. Um, even when we talk about the platforms, mm-hmm. only before even before we came here, we were on one, on one of those platforms. We had a meeting, of course, a debriefing, which was with the same young people or by internet. So those platforms you want to utilize. My presentation basically on the day was to introduce Ikimba to the persons who were there. It was fairly new to a lot of persons because most most persons would have focused on normal youth issues, etc. But Ikimba wants to keep spreading this whole um, movement of reparations. Persons might say, well, it doesn't have nothing to do with me because, you know, I'm not of African descendant, you know, I'm not really affected by slavery. But once we can always understand that slavery, enslavement was a crime against humanity. And once you are against crimes against humanity, you automatically support the movement for reparations. So that was it's something... Human that, it's, it's, it's a human rights issue at the end of the day. So that's one of the things that I want to hit in the nail at that forum, and I think I did. Um... We, I spoke, of course, on our creation, how we want to engage young people, which is, of course, through the area of culture, um, utilizing the different means to talk to young people and to just sit down and, you know, this lecture series is not always for every young person. You have to then, and even yesterday we spoke about tailoring your message yeah, to mm-hmm. meet the particular crowd or audience. So that was something that I put forward out there. Mm-hmm. Um, just to touch back on it also with the regional movement, we already have made ties with Jamaica since the May twenty fifth when we were there. Um Ash is here now who's, you know, making that ties even more stronger. Um the dialogue is something that is something that's gonna be done um via the internet and that's going to lead up to next year, especially eventually the youth reparation, reparation conference, conference which will be held yeah. in Guyana. So it's something that we want to really carry regionally because we want this name of Ikema to spread across the Caribbean. We are the first youth reparation organization in the Caribbean and that's something that I always want to commend ourselves for for actually taking that step and you can you know take it as far as we can. Swahili for it starts with and you can go there. So um I'm I'm also happy that we have mm. Asha and Melissa. Melissa Vassa right? yes Vassa. who's um into the arts yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Asha Let's go to beside reparation. Mm-hmm. What else happened at the conference? Okay, so the conference, it's a forum. The forum. <laughs> Be correct. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> All right, so for the forum, um, as I said, we'd have had these youth dialogues that took place over two months. And the main aim of it was to get recommendations to be posited for there is a forum. Forgive me, I'm not remembering the exact name, but there was a forum that would have been in Peru, Lima. We had persons there as well that were present. That concluded today. Mm-hmm. So That's it's the Montevideo yeah. Consensus. It's, based, it's, it's a forum centered around the Montevideo Consensus. And um, so these recommendations were based on updating the Lisbon Declaration, which is 20 years old, and Montevideo, which I think is 5 years old. And we, over the time, so we started out with a hundred recommendations because you know everybody had a lot of mm-hmm. recommendations that was probably specific to their territory and we were well, like no a hundred no 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 we need to be specific and we went down to 64 <laughs> and we from the 64 we went down to 21 and those were youth centered recommendations that we as youth were able to posit and the end result was a 41 there are 41 recommendations that was now completed and the forum was not only youth. we had representations from all the all the different governments across the region so you had what is it all the different governments Guyana, Belize, Jamaica and they basically touched issues on population youth and development and so the recommendations that were put forward are specific to those so you know it was three days opening ceremony um, joint youth statement that we got feedback from from all the youth that was presented and then different panels they had 11 panels each panel always I had a youth representative and they spoke to various issues so intergenerational dialogue um, the diaspora how do we engage them in terms of we had sexual health and reproduction so there's various issues that would have affected health, youth population and development 
and the out of these panels we were able to get the recommendations that was the end result of this forum all right and it's available on the eclax website in terms of if you want to see the full breakdown of each day they're all there all right. so let's come back to you now sule ekamba reaching out because we're talking about be making the movement regional mm -hmm. but let's not only look regionally but let's look locally as well mm -hmm. we just talked about our first general members meeting the yeah. campus reaching out to young people locally what are we doing what are our what are our plans for engaging young people what can young people look forward to how do they contact us well for Ikemba, what we're doing, the, the purpose of Ikemba is to, to change the rhetoric on black consciousness or what it is to be African or afro Guyanese for that matter. So we are here to reach out to youth to, through social media and through traditional media as well because we're going to be brand, using branding, um, merchandises and so forth. Those are coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot of hashtagging, so just look out for those. Mm -hmm. Mostly uh, check our Facebook page and that will be primarily where you can contact us. Um, what else are we doing? We are also reaching out to communities, trying to reach out to communities to see how we can further educate youths. Because as was mentioned before, we're looking at self-repair, education and self-repair. So what we're trying to do is provide a space for youths to come and speak their minds and tell us what are the troubles, what's going on, so we can directly address those troubles. And also bring it into the space of youths for reparation. Um, I'm sorry, I lost a few questions just because there was a, a lot. Just give me. Well, we're, we're, we're almost out of time. Uh -huh. So I'll just ask you, I'll just, before I ask you for your closing remarks, I'll just ask you, um, to how, how can young people get onto Kembo? How can young people get onto us? Um, you can hit us up on Facebook mostly. We'll be there with, with prompt responses. Um, Facebook slash Ikemba. That's I-K-E-M-B-A, Ikemba. You can look out for the logo that's behind us, and that will be our page. You can get on to me directly at Sule Collymore on f at Facebook there, and I'll be happy, happy to <laughs> engage you. All right. So I'll ask for closing remarks, starting with you, Asha. Okay. So thanks very much for having me. Um, it was it was truly a pleasure. I think being a part of this learning, I'm I'm very much open to the learning process, and. I'm interested, I'm very much open to see what Guyana will be like and just to enjoy the experience in terms of my internship. I was happy to have you guys as a part of the forum, we really did en um, enrich the conversation and the dialogue and we want to, as a youth, as youth across the region, we want to keep that cohesion and just formalize our, our, our operations and just launch out in unity. So everyone operating in their own spaces but just going forward together and ensuring that us as youth on all the areas reparation education are addressed well basically what i would like to say one this is a youth thing so i don't want to be the voice for the elite set of young people <laughs> <laughs> and we know we have that conversation that uh sure yeah. they, 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 that's the basically elite, elite. basically you want this reparation movements for everyone it's for every young person it's more than just something that is for persons who can talk big and feel big but for every young person that is wants to be involved in something that feels that you know Reparations is something close to you as an African person. And on that note, you know, it's been good being on this television program, it's been mm -hmm. good being a part of Ikimba. And, you know. You say like you're going. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be here. Ikimba will be, Ikimba will be here. Thank you very much for watching Ikimba, a youth program on reparation. See you next time. And remember, Inazana. 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 <laughs> <laughs>